Robert Fritz's Structural Consulting Channel. What this is. We present four structural consultations, ones that change people's lives. The idea behind this channel is for you to witness a completely different understanding of the human condition. Here are a few things to know. Structural consulting is not therapy. It is an exploration of the underlying structures in the client's life that produces predictable patterns of behavior. What is structure? Structure is a combination of elements that impact each other. In these sessions, the client's structures are a combination of what they want to create, how reality actually is, and the various concepts that they have. The concepts clients have are usually hidden from them, but these concepts have impact in influencing the client's life patterns. A change of structure will cause a change of the client's patterns. The principle. The underlying structure of anything will determine its behavior. The process involves seeing the actual patterns in the client's life, which leads to a better understanding of the client's underlying structure. The sessions last between one or two hours. We suggest that if you do decide to watch them, do so when you have time to see the entire process. If you want to see more structure consultations, subscribe to the channel. And here is the session. Okay, so hi, what do you want to talk about? Um, what I want to talk about is uh, the continuity of my business, maybe, because, you know, I've started, I, ha I had a head start in my uh, coaching and consciousness facilitating business. Mm -hmm. But then after probably three years, I lost I lost a lot of motivation and slowly, slowly, it's like, it's like being, it's dropping, like the, yeah. the subscriber count is dropping. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I somehow, you know, this anxiety comes up, like I, I need to maintain it. I need to create over and over, put on content, videos, blog posts, but I'm just not feeling it. It's just yeah. like, yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's so, basically. So um, why don't you just stop it? Hmm. Probably because it's my, it's my only income source at the moment. And uh, I'd like, yeah, what would I do instead? So let me, let me get this straight. You're gonna keep it going. Well, even though your heart's not in it. No. No. Then, of course, I, I would stop. But it, seem, mm -hmm. it seems to be that my heart is in the work, in the work, in the facilitation. I love to facilitate workshops and see people grow and mm -hmm. see them transform and i love to to do the same work on me like mm -hmm. uh, contemplation and going deeper and deeper into into my self structure seeing what's going on dropping unnecessary stuff and in the workshops really like i'm having a blast every single time but keeping the the marketing machinery on this is really like a very tiring process and, and, and also like not tiring necessarily but it's i have i have my i don't know my kind of fears and i just don't don't like it what, what, it, what it feels too much of? like a what, what is it that you're afraid of what i'm mostly afraid of You know, I, I've watched myself over time and my, my videos or my books and my blogs, they're always like top notch content, high value. And I'm making sure that uh, there are no holes that people can poke. So I mention every kind of objection that can come up 
Okay, well, listen, my question, like solid. my question is, what are you afraid of? Not what are you compensating for in your video? Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> the, the bottom line probably is I'm afraid of being made wrong. Why okay. are you afraid of that? Made wrong. I'm afraid of yeah being made wrong because I would lose my reputation and I would lose my business. No, you wouldn't. You, there's some people who would make you wrong, and some people would agree with you, and the people that agree with you with you would stay with you, and the people that didn't agree with you would leave, and that's probably a good thing. Anyway, the answer you gave me was a consequence answer. But it doesn't actually answer the question. So what am I afraid of? Is the question, right? It's really hard to answer. Well, think about the strategy you have of trying to make sure there are no holes and nobody could argue with you and you've got everything covered. Yeah. What is it that you're compensating for? In the, what you said was people shooting holes in what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And um, that's quite a strategy. I mean, what, what is it all about? Am I compensating for, for not being enough mm -hmm. yet or for, for, not, for not embodying the, the stuff I'm talking about fully? So it's like, it's a, it's a wonderful intellectual conceptual package I have for the people. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to some extent, embody it and live by it course not all the time and sometimes i mention it but well if you do mention it you mention it defensively yeah so exactly as, so as to plug that hole exactly <laughs> yeah but basically i'm still kind of like the the enlightened master kind of image that i'm trying to convey why are you trying to convey that image just, that's what I've been doing all the time. And yeah, if I stop question, it doing the question that. question is not how long have you been doing it. <laughs> yeah. The question is why do you do it for however long you've been doing it? Yeah, it's just to feel superior. I don't know, to feel superior to, to maybe other, other teachers, why? other channels. Why? So I've, I've seen so many channels and, uh, and other... I've been to seminars and workshops and they just teach very single dimensional stuff which works maybe in a very narrow kind of context but you oftentimes just to say you're really not answering my question you're saying why you approach it differently than they do now I can have a picture of you approaching it differently than they do and not trying to position yourself as the enlightened master. But who's going to believe me? Or who's going, you, going to listen they, if I don't mean, have any value to share? You, do you mean that the the ideas themselves are not that compelling. So you've got to really position yourself in a position of authority so as to lend credibility to the ideas. Is that what you're saying? No, the, the, no, no, no. The, That's what's implied. The Just, content is, I believe in it and I really think it works. Well, then why do you have to be the big shot who's presenting it since if you believe that then for themselves? making a distinction now between the content you're presenting 
and the way you position yourself in order to present it. We're having yeah. a discussion about the positioning, not the content. Yeah. Probably because the positioning helps with the delivery. It's like if I'm telling something and I'm not living it, well, then it's basically fraud. But if you're telling something, you're not living it, but you're pretending that you're living it or pretending that you're- oh, that, That's authority. fraud as well. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I <clears throat> see the power in, in those principles and in the work I do, but I also know that it's very, very hard work. And it has. No, you, you got to understand. I'm going to come back to the question I asked yeah. you. And you're not, you're sort of like answering a different question that I didn't ask you. Yeah, I see. I see. I try to, to get the whole context. So, no, so, you're not. You're trying, no, you're avoiding the question. You're <laughs> the whole context. I mean, I just centered right in on that question. I made a distinction between content and your positioning. And um, so let's stay with the positioning. It's not, it's a very, in a way, a very clear and simple question, but it means you got to really focus on an answer to that question, which is why do you position yourself as the enlightened master? And given what else you've said you don't see yourself as the enlightened master yeah yeah but you position yourself that way why because i think that's that's needed in why? order to to why, why is it needed to teach and convey these kinds of principles so you would only study with someone who's an enlightened master no matter how good their ideas are but if if they have results yeah through the work yes i would study with them even and if they're not an enlightened master it's not about the word enlightened uh, it, it's about well do you really live what you teach the question is not that the question is why do you position yourself on the level of presumed authority that you do yeah knowing, yeah. knowing it's an act exactly yeah that's the question. You have to answer it. <laughs> Probably it's, it's, it's the circle thing because I'm afraid that people will stop will stop watching my videos. Okay, and but leave. Listen, listen, just follow it through though. Now, if you were your, this is what you're implying. If you were yourself, exactly as you are, they wouldn't be interested even if your content is good. Well, logically, no, that's not true, but feeling no, wise, but it, it yes. Is what you're, it is what you're implying though. You may say it's not true in reality, but in the structure that you're in yeah yeah exactly it's true and that's what we're addressing yeah right now you know mm -hmm. right? why why do you position yourself that way yeah if you were left to your own devices they probably wouldn't be that interested yeah mm. how come yeah, because to some uh, normal guy it's very unenlightened i've read some books yes and i have i have implemented a lot of stuff and learned a lot and become free myself a lot but still in daily life i have my my problems what's wrong you know, 
What's wrong with being a normal person who has problems in daily life? Nothing. Well, you just, though, said that there was something, you implied there was something wrong with that. Yes, yeah. So my question that, is, what's wrong with that? And it can't be nothing. It has to be something <laughs> given that you have a strategy to compensate for it. This is one of those two and two equals four things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's wrong with, with being normal? Yeah, and being imperfect too. I mean, there's uh, uh, you have you have implied that being perfect is better than being imperfect. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Oh uh, yeah, of course. Why? And, what do you mean, of course? Why is that true? I mean, I don't even. No, no, no. Of course, looking at my my content and everything, it's just so nice, and everything is excellent. Like one of my biggest values is excellence. So, and it's well, compulsive which, which, or already, almost. What is, uh, you know, having good production values is not production values. It's not the same as being perfect. It's also not the same as being enlightened. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that means, by the way. you're equating good production values with some notion of perfection and implying that the good production values symbolically equals yeah. something important. Someone who has just figured stuff out and someone who, who is in a position to talk about these things, to, to talk about very profound, you know, truths or things in life. What makes something profound? So, for example, being an ordinary person who has problems is not profound? You're see, you're implying hierarchy. Yeah, I'm, and I am. You're, you're implying a um, degree, a graduated degree of excellence and progress. Yeah. So you're better off here than you are there. Yes. That's, yeah. Well, why do you think that? But I think that I wanted to say, because I see how much I have struggled in the past, I see how, how much people struggle in my workshops, for example, and how helpful the principles are that I'm teaching. You know, I, I don't even have to teach them if no, I, I don't tell make you, that's that not answering my That's not answering my question about why you think people it's profound to progress to a higher quote unquote higher state that's that's different by the way than functionally living a better life it's not the same thing okay and you're you're and i'm trying to separate so you can actually have an easier time mm -hmm. of thinking through the actual question because you use words like profundity. Yeah. And the, that implies, and you use words like deeper, profundity and deeper. Mm -hmm. And what's deeper? What's more profound? Profound is like a higher state of inner freedom. So meaning then freedom from why is concepts. that more profound? Why is it, it might be something you like, but why is it more profound? 
because it comes with with more content, satisfaction, and happiness. It may, it may, it it may. may, it may come with more um, frustration about the state of the world. I mean, it depends on what you're looking at. So you you're implying like a level of uh, let's call it spiritual progress. Spiritual progress, inner freedom, I would say. A, a human progress. Human progress, yeah, yeah. Human oh. adult, adulthood progress, like human development. Yeah, that that would be probably more correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why? Besides the so, so I'm going to try to frame the question in such a way that you don't give me consequential consequence answers. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, success is better than failure. Yes, we like it better. You know, but sometimes you fail. Is is there any real difference besides the outcome and the consequences? Are you more enlightened if you succeed and less enlightened if you fail? No, no, that, that's not the case. What is the case? But what, what, what kind of success are you, are you pointing to? Failure in what? Uh, do you think you're a better person if you're more enlightened or a better person if you're more developed? Maybe not a better person, but a happier person. That's consequences. Okay. You can also be a happier person if you have a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Better person. Yeah, yeah. I would. Okay, I would. What probably... I'm trying to do, just to say, uh, to be clear, what I'm trying to do is find out your standards of measurement. Yeah. And then question them. Question them in relationship to. Why do you think that? And that also is in relationship to you. Like, you know, there's a way that you must take it personally. You know, you must think it's true about you if it's yeah. true about everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. is find out the standards of measurement. You know, what, what's, what's better, what's worse, you know, because it's certainly okay. an implied, there's an implied hierarchy. Yeah. And I want to know why you think there's a hierarchy and mm -hmm. yeah, why is it better? No, no, the, tricky, the tricky thing is, is to not go into the realm of consequences. You know, you okay. go, oh, well, people have you. Oh, people are freer or people have, you know, yeah. nicer smiles or people like live longer or people, you know, get along better with their in-laws or, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, those all are the consequences. Which, all of which may be true, but irrelevant to hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. It could be other than, you know, something and something else. Those are two different things, but there's no hierarchy. And But you are you are implying a hierarchy, and that's what we're focusing in on at this moment. Okay, yeah. So what was the question? It is... There, what is the standards of measurement in terms of hierarchy? You know, what do you, what, why is a person who's happier, for example, better, not in consequences, but better than a person who's not happy? Why is a person who knows more better than a person who doesn't know much? An ignorant person makes life around them very hard. How? By uh, <laughs> simply by, know, by 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 not by not meeting people's expectations or my expect my expectations of of having a certain level of excellence, service, you know, thought. Come on. I'm sorry, I froze for a minute. Okay, yeah. I, I froze. Yeah, it's okay. on my side. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
you, I said how, and you said by not meeting, and then you froze. So why don't you start with by not meeting? And by not by not meeting my expectations, and I then project that to other people that not meeting people's expectations of excellence, of comfort, of uh, doing good work. It's like just a why? Why? Yeah. Why do people have to be as those things? I mean, why do you have to be those things? I always want to say to be a valuable human being. Okay. So with those things. Again. I said without those things, therefore you are. I'm a, I'm a worthless person. Okay. So all of this is a compensation for avoiding being a worthless person. Yeah, that sounds very true. Yeah. It's... So that would say, well, let's just follow it through a little bit. Um, that would say that it's not okay for you to be yourself because left to your own devices, you wouldn't be excellent. You wouldn't be of value. You wouldn't be worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, you know, I'm a very lazy person. Like I, I love to do nothing. Yeah. Just read books. Well, not nothing. I'm, I'm not watching TV. I study. I read books yeah. and stuff. But, but the point is that, so you, is there something wrong with being a lazy person? <laughs> well, no, if nobody sees me. <laughs> Except my wife. <laughs> So if people knew <laughs> how lazy I was. Well, only, only because that would show that you have a, a literal contradiction to the claim to excellence and hard work and, you know, get on with it and, you know, accomplish things. Yeah, yeah. 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 What are you seeing? What are you, as we're talking, what's, what are you noticing um, that's, about the structure you're in. <clears throat> what I'm noticing is, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's right on point, but it is mixed up with being worthless or with the belief of being worthless. And uh, for that, you know, I try to create so much value. It's like value is, even in my book, I wrote an entire chapter on value and how you need to create value. Mm. in order to you know earn money and uh, also live a meaningful life just do something for others and create yeah. and but at the same time i'm quite quite uh, scared of creating I just like to be lazy so i am lazy 80 percent of the time and 20 percent of the time i struggle and struggle to get a diamond out again to really squeeze the diamond out yeah but and then look it's at like the motivation Phew. but look at the motivation yeah it's totally fear-based it's like it's all compensation it's, also, it's a compensate exactly it's compensation for how you really think you are i want to check out your pattern you sent me yeah uh, a story and um and uh, this, let me check it against other things. It may, it may or may not be, it might be a typical or something that's not typical. So let's just check it out against other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think of a story in which you started out for something, you had it. The end yes. of the story, you no longer had it. Do you have one? Yeah. You had a desire? Uh, yes. You made a commitment? Yes. You saw something wrong? Uh, in what? In the state of the world? Or, yeah, probably yeah. the state of the world. Okay, yeah. And you took in a me. stand? In you me. Took a, you took yes. a stand? 
completely. You had success. You had success at first. Yes. You became overwhelmed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You made a change. Made a change. You became overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Made a change. <clears throat> more became, success. Yeah. More success. You got yes. an opportunity. Yes. Complexity involved, or led to complexity. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, and then but, there was some small success uh, at the end of that. Um, well, after the complexity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I finished okay. the project. Because the small success led to less foundation, or that whole thing led to less foundation at that point. What do you mean by foundation? Uh, so, like um, the foundation you had in the beginning mm -hmm. was no longer there at this point in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, because through the complexity, uh, it's yeah, all yeah. kind of. I, I yeah. don't actually want to know what the story was. I want to just <laughs> see yeah. if, if that happened. Um, yeah. And then you tried to fix it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like yeah. notoriously for, for two months. And then it didn't work. No. Oh, every time I I put in the work, it worked. But every time I didn't, there was no new foundation. Yeah. Was there then a major change? Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. And then you quit. Yeah. Kind of were thinking or about was, quitting. Or was quit. Yeah. Yeah. And that story you did every step that you did in the story that you gave me that I wrote. The yes. Yeah. Should we do it? Should we try one more? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know what you, what's the subject of the story is? Another story. Yeah. Uh, 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 again, an oscillating pattern or. Yeah. Yeah. One where you got it, but then at the end, you no longer had it. Um, Actually, I thought about it a lot, and this is the only one which really pops to mind. Before at school and stuff. You know. Okay, you don't don't tell me the story. I'm just going to ask if you did the steps, and you tell me if you did or didn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have the story. Oh, you have to have a specific story. Yeah. yeah. Could have been okay. a relationship, could have been a project, or you know, whatever. You got one? Yeah, yes, I got one. Okay, desire. You had a desire? No. What did you have? No, maybe that. Well, tell me what you had. I had I had kind of uh, a sense of duty. That I, that I ha had to do it. So there was no really desire. Okay. By the way, that qualifies for your first story. I don't know if that qualifies for your second. <clears throat> but the way you described your first story was there were some things going on. And out of that, you then had a desire. So um, mm -hmm. did you make a commitment? No, just went with the flow. Oh, okay. Why don't you just tell me the story then and I'll see you. Um, so there was uh, pressure to do something. Which, what's the next thing you did in the story? No, I just I just went along, just did what was necessary, went along. Okay, then what happened? Then I uh, felt kind of superior to everybody else. Well, so, I did I did good work first. I did okay, good work. Okay, okay wait. Okay. 
when you say you felt superior, did you, was that like you measured yourself as superior or you established to them that you were superior? Or what, uh, what's that step look like? I measured myself. I saw myself superior. Okay. And probably seeing, seeing them, like being jealous sometimes. Yeah, I, I could see it. I, I wasn't really. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what, what came out of that? What happened because of that? I started to make a change. Um, before you change in this situation, what was going on? Maybe some success, success in that, in that environment. Yeah. But that success felt quite meaningless because I knew that my heart wasn't in it. Okay, so felt meaningless. Then what? So yeah, I prepared a change. Mm -hmm. And then quit. Okay. Why don't we uh, look at this story, this pattern from other stories as well? Mm -hmm. Can you think of one? Another story? Yeah, another story. Do you have one? Mm. Because, I mean, this could have been a one time deal or it could be a pattern, you know? I mean, the other one, of, of course. You've done a few times, so we know that's one pattern you have, but this might also be a pattern. Oh, yes, yeah. You got one? Yeah, I got one. Pressure? Yeah. Maybe. You went along? Yeah. You did good work? Mm hmm Saw yourself as superior? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was some degree of success? Yeah. But you, it felt meaningless? Mm-hmm. You prepared uh, a change. Kind of, yes. So I, I finish up. I finish everything up. This is important. It's not like I so exactly prepare a change and finish everything up, and then I quit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you finished up, prepared for a change and quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got another one? Do you have another story? Mm, yeah, I'm thinking. Where you set out for something. Don't, don't try to fit the story into the pattern. Okay. Basically, yeah. just think in terms of here's the beginning, there was a, and then it ended and it wasn't a good ending. I can take a past relationship. Okay. Okay. Is there press, pressure? Yeah, a little. Yes. Yeah. You went along? Yeah. And you did good work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And you saw yourself as superior. Yeah. And uh, you had some success, but it felt meaningless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You finished up. Yeah. And you prepared for a change. Yeah, or I tried at least and then quit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So 
at least um, we have a couple of types of, of oscillating patterns. And that helps to helps us understand. Mm -hmm. All right, so your life feels like there's this, um, let's see, it's, it's not simply lazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, lazy is just, because if you were really lazy, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's what the meaning of lazy is. It's, it's maybe it's maybe super efficient. Maybe that's a better word. Like, but idle. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, because the way you described it is twenty. You know, eighty percent of the time you're lazy, and then you pressure yourself into twenty percent of excellence, and you know, drum solo of stuff. Yeah. And then when it's over, you feel relieved because you're exhausted because of yeah. all the stuff you had to do to, to make up for the 80% of the time. Yeah. 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 So why do you have to accomplish anything at all in life whatsoever? Because that, I don't know, seeing it in my parents, my grandparents and Seeing what? Doing good work. Going so what? Through. They'd still be your parents if they didn't do good work. I mean, what's, what's the big deal? I, I got so much from them. And well, at least, you know, I have to, to maybe do you got something. The wrong, maybe you got the wrong things. I mean, why do you owe them anything at all? <laughs> but what I owe them also, what I think is just like having a good life and showing that I'm a responsible person like being responsible what will that give them? happiness to see their their son thrive and their grandson if I was just so lazy. they wouldn't be happy if you were just hanging out as a normal person like most of us they would think they're a big failure if that were the case. Yeah, but hanging out like a normal person means going to a job, doing the work, maybe, get maybe. a paycheck. You know, what does all that mean, though? You mean you can't be a bee to them? You know, God forbid if you ever decided to go paint in Tahiti or something. Or... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, why, you know, why, why are you not free to live your life the way you want? Because I don't even know Sorry? what do I want. Like... No, that's not the question. The question is not what you want. The question is why are you not free to live your life the way you want? That's a different question. See, now I'm, I'm really on to you. I have to be very focused on the question so you don't kind of worm, your, worm away from it with a qualifier, it's what you just did. Yeah. So, because what you're presenting is that you have to accomplish, and you, here's what we have so far, that you really feel either worthless or valueless, that you have to produce value, you have to work extra hard to make sure you do that to compensate for how you really think about yourself. Yeah. And that for some reason, it's not okay for you to just live your life the way you want. You have to look to your parents' standards and whatever else that is. And then you present yourself as having accomplished your ideal at a certain level, which you know is not true. Yeah, yeah. That sounds very right. So why can't you just be the way you are? Why do you have to do all this drum solo of stuff? If I was the way I, I am, I, 
No, uh, it's with, not the way you are. It's the way the underlying structure is. And if, if I just went along with There's my an underlying laziness. structure. Let, let me put it to you this way. There's an underlying structure that's giving rise to a pattern of behavior. Yeah. What we're doing is we're looking to understand what is the underlying structure that gives rise to the pattern of behavior. It has nothing to do with your DNA or how you are or your astrology or mm -hmm. your numerology or your genetic code or your cultural background or your family background or anything like that. It has to do with the underlying structure, which includes, among other things, the concepts that you have combined with your aspirations and your values and current reality and so on. And so that's what we're looking at. So, yeah. and, and, and please help me. <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, your question was, so what would happen if no, I just no, let no, loose? Not, no, my question was not what would happen. What was the question again? The question Sorry. is what, what is wrong with just being yourself? And okay, see, if I asked you what would happen, you give me a consequence answer. Okay, what is wrong? And the reason why I asked it as precisely as I did is because I knew if I asked it the other way, you would give me a consequence answer. Okay. And I didn't want to, I wanted the real thinking. I wanted the real, what is the real idea here? Okay, what uh, what's wrong, wrong with just being yourself? I mean, what's wrong with left your own devices, whatever it is? Another way of asking it is this, why do you have to be any better than you are? All, all which comes up is consequence. I, I would not make money, would not be able to No, sustain. you could make money. No, I'm sorry. You can make money. You just get a job and you make money. It's a secondary choice, choice to a primary choice of making money. You, as you are, with a job. Your, your, even your argument about the consequences is not steeped in reality. So why can't you just be the way you are? The good, bad, and indifferent, whatever it is. The good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, why do you have to be better than you are? Now, I'd like you to think about this from the standpoint of Your, your life strategy is to be better than you are. Yeah. And why do you have to be better than you are? What's wrong with you the way you are? All which comes to mind is consequence. Well, maybe, but think it through and don't let just things come to mind. I mean, actually think it through. Be better than I am. Do you think you're a better person if you succeed and not as good if you fail? Yes, yes, I do. Why? How are you better? How are you not as good if you fail? Yeah. No, I let my my family, my family down. Why? How? How do you let your family down if you try something out and you fail? How does that letting him down?
Yeah, I, ju I just see my, my grandmother totally dissolved in tears because I failed. Really? She's that? She thinks you're a better person if you succeed and not as good if you fail and she wouldn't love you if you tried something out and failed? No, no, she would love me. So what's the deal then? They made it from Romania to, to Germany with really hard work and they provided them. me. Good they provided me. With... Wait, wait, whoa. They wanted to do that. <laughs> you weren't even around. <laughs> No, I was around three. <laughs> okay, all right. So they had you and then they did that, but they didn't do it because, oh, we got a three-year-old, we better get out of Romania. No, no, so, of course. So you, you're wanted glorifying, to. <laughs> look, you're glorifying, you're romanticizing, you're dra dramatizing, <laughs> you're making it into this big, you know, you got to live up to the family yeah. business because they did so much dedication to, you know, sacrifice themselves to get to a better country, better uh, in terms of possibilities for them. Yeah. I don't mean better in some existential way. I mean, better for them, for their possibilities. And they did that because they wanted to do that. That was their choice. Yeah, that's true. Do you really know for sure that they have passion with your success that they would not like like you uh, as much if you failed. No, that's not true. They would love you anyway. Yeah. So what's the difference between them and you? <laughs> None. So you would love yourself anyway, even if you failed. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So for that, no. I hate myself. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's, look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I see it. <laughs> I see it. What do you got against yourself? I mean, you're blaming your family, but it's not them, really. I'm sure there would be. I'm not even blaming my family. I you always, are. You're, I you're, always you're, thought that I'm so thankful. You're attributing, yeah, you, you, that's your gratefulness is just, a manipulation on yourself. In other words, I better be good because of all the stuff they did. But yeah. that's has nothing. I bet there were things you disagreed with them about, right? Of course, yeah. So you agreed with them about certain things and not other things. What was relevant is that you chose to believe whatever it is that you've chosen to believe. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about how much pressure you put on yourself to perform, be a good person, succeed. And then if you don't do that, you know, you hate yourself. Yeah. When you see that, what do you think? Then now actually like it yeah, it's it's horrifying. It's really it's I'm, I'm I'm suffering constantly. I always have this this weight on my shoulder. Yeah, it's like always the next gig, always the next gig. I try to resolve it quickly and then have this this temporary freedom which I enjoy, and then still, mm -hmm. even me going on a trip, always I have it in the back of my mind. Yeah, but. You know, I need to perform. I need to get back to shooting a video or doing work. And it's, yeah. it's destroying me. And I, I need these, yeah, the, the, these, let's say, re relaxation, relaxation times in order to kind of get back. And then I get back in the struggle. But the thing is, I, yeah. I create the struggle for myself. It's like as, as if I wanted it. But you create it because you're not living in reality. You're living in this concept. Yeah. And somehow it's not okay to be yourself. Yeah, it has always been like, I need to give back somehow. No, you don't. How, tell me how you have to give back. Why do you have to give back? I don't know. So it's so like kind of, earn my existence or earn my, earn my privilege 
because I, like I got it, a lot you, of privilege. How, how is giving back justifying your existence? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I mean, in reality, you exist, right? Yeah. It's like winning the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to earn it. Yeah, very true. So you have these various concepts. You have a, you have a, a lot of concepts. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> but some of them will be more dominant and causal than others. Some of them are subsets of a, ma a major concept. So you know my frames, right? You know, we have dynamic urge, which is aspirations and values and it also could be appetites in a close-up frame or it could be vague hopes in a long frame we have uh, current reality and we have concepts yeah and these are combined in what i call a causal set and in this structure three elements three different elements that's one another come on okay and that's another and each of these elements when they combine each of the elements are looking for equilibrium what concepts are there until now well so far, what we've seen is you have identity. This is about you living up to your ideal and, and contradicting what you really think about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another concept is purpose and existence. Yeah. And another one is control. Mm -hmm. The control one is basically the world's a dangerous place and you better look out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you also, you may also have another one that's called parental preoccupation. I don't know. If what, is, what is that? It's where you're really focused on what your parents think about you. Mm hmm. So I don't actually think you got that one. I think you use that one as an excuse though. But. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you what I think, mm -hmm. but we have to test it out because it could be any, any one of these. Yeah. But I actually think it's identity, but it may not be, but this is where I'm gonna test it out and you yeah. have to help. By, by thinking about your motivation for doing things. Yeah. Your motivation for doing things will, will be, will tell us the story. Mm -hmm. So in the ideal, in the, in the uh, identity one, you have an unwanted belief. Which generates an ideal When I asked you, you know, what it, you, you, the ideal is enlightened and blah, 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 perfect. Yeah. And the unwanted belief is you're, you know, you're of no value, you're worthless. Yeah. The ideal, of course, would be to have great value and worth. Yeah. And then you have that give back. You yeah. To give back and blah, blah, blah. So, come on. So, and then there's reality. And in reality, sometimes you'll be good, sometimes you won't, sometimes you'll succeed, sometimes you'll fail. In your case, in your pattern, success 
generates conflict. Did you have you seen that? Did you see yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it's, it's the absolutely... more success, the the, the more conflict, yeah, it's how amazing. Harder it is to keep up with it. Yeah, I mean, over here, and then this one, there's uh, success, and then more success, and then a small success, and it always generates conflict. That's because of the competing tension resolution systems. Yeah, yeah, that that are because of the con. I think because of the concept. Now. The, the other thing is that people in this structure often create a lot of experiences that are designed to reinforce the ideal and contradict the uh, belief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, because if you ask me, like, I'm very good at it. I'm very yeah. good at the work, you know. If, yeah. if I have a new goal, I know I will succeed. Yeah. I have so, that. So yeah. you're you're basically saying I'm I have all these experiences to argue to support the ideal and argue against the yeah, belief. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think the belief actually is? Do you have any clue? I mean, we 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 got as a first pass, we got worthless. Um, does it go beyond that or is you know? Um, maybe I'm a, I'm a burden. How? To whom? You know, if I don't give back, if I don't create value, like I'm, I'm a parasite. You know, people have to feed me. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm useless. Well, I'm useless. Yeah, maybe that's. So, by the way, do you think that all people who are fed are useless? Oh, no. No, just you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, and again, that's a kind of a consequence thing, but do you think it might be this structure? Hmm. Let me give you a picture of the other structure that it might be. And, and let's see if we can sort out which one it is. It's like you and I are backing up, looking at the structure, trying to f explore unknown yeah. territory. Yeah. Okay. And this one. And by the way, I don't mean this as models, but you've already given me indications of these things. So yeah. it's not like we're trying to fill out a formula or something. Yeah. yeah. But no. in this structure, there is the concept of the world is dangerous. And what that generates is control. To make sure you avoid risk. You know, I, I didn't see a lot of this in what we've said so far. I don't necessarily see it in your pattern. It's just every now and then you talk about, and maybe that was more on the level of consequences, how the world would explode if you don't kind of keep everything together. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, maybe it's it's something inside identity as well because I I consider myself as meek and weak. Yeah, like I, I need to 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 keep up to to kind of you know okay. survive. Maybe that's more an identity thing. I think so. Yeah, yeah. No, that it, makes because yeah because yeah, yeah. I I grew up amongst very yeah, you know, strong men. Like my father, he was, you know, he's an engineer. He, you know, and all his friends, they were like real men, you know, you know. 
and masculine. What were you? <laughs> masculine. And I, Wait a second. What were you, a fake man? <laughs> no, no, I was the, the meek the meek boy next to them, kind of, who wasn't interested in these kinds of engineering things at all. Yeah. Uh, like no technical, no... Uh, Is there something wrong with not being macho? Yeah, I, you know, I've worked through it you a did. lot over time. But How did you it, work through it? My, my conclusion was then, well, okay, you don't have to be macho, but at least uh, give a lot back, be responsible, <laughs> and, and give value to people. To make, to make up for being weak? Kind of, yeah. So, or make up, okay. is it to being weak? Or meek, or weak, or, yeah. Yeah, that kind of sounds true. Yeah. What does that mean to you? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, is there like a German term that's more accurate or precise for you than the English term, weak? There's a Romanian, there's a Romanian word. Yeah. That's finuts. In, in, in English, they would be translated to, he, he's quite, quite sensible or he's a Sensitive, fine, you mean? Sensitive? Sen, no, no, no. He, like, like glass, like if you touch it, it breaks. So the oh, boy, oh. the boy is- Fragile, kind of, fragile. Fragile, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. It goes in the direction of fragile. And, you know, the boy is fragile. I remember my, my grandmother saying, well, leave him alone. The boy is fragile. In, in Romanian? In Romanian. Using that term. Using exactly that term. Oh, and yeah. Somehow like, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I really need to keep up to, to survive and keep afloat on my own. Hmm. What would happen if you don't keep up? Uh, think about it not from the standpoint of consequences, more in terms of threat. In terms of threat, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the threat? Maybe that's the wrong direction. Um, is there something wrong with being fragile? Besides consequences of being hurt or something. I mean, there's just something wrong with being the kind of boy who isn't like your father and his friends. It's shameful. It's shameful to to not be part of that. Why? What's the shame? See, I want again. I'm I'm looking for not consequences. Yeah. But the meaning of why one would be ashamed of being the way he is. cannot keep up with life again cannot sustain that's the family and certainly hey you know what um let's just let's just end that right now because of course you can't keep up with life and you can do all the stuff you want to do if you want to do it so that whole myth about the world's going to fall apart which by the way is part of the control dimension mm -hmm. of this 
No, then that would not be it. The world doesn't fall apart, but I would just, I would just rot and become a raisin and, <laughs> and fall dead. <laughs> That's not what would happen. As long as you get enough food and water and clothing and eat, <laughs> you'd still be around. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to be a parasite to my family and to Oh, you mean if, if you were that way, they would have to take care of you? They're kind of. Yeah, so. Kind of having that fear. Yeah, well, wait a second. That might be a good way of making a living. You don't have to worry about making a living anymore. I don't want to put that burden on, on them. They, it's up their choice whether they want to support you or not. Why are you deciding for them? That's a rhetorical. <laughs> that's a rhetorical question, anyway. So I, I don't mean it as a serious <laughs> question. It's more of a playing with the idea. Do, do you, you still think it's not okay to be exactly the way you are, huh? Yeah, it's, we're slowly getting there. But I still don't know exactly why I cannot allow myself to be lazy. Because that's my biggest, that seems to be my biggest passion. Just to chill and watch movies and go to the museum. <laughs> And, you know, do all these things, but not, not create value. And creating values, that's survival. It's necessary. It's like always say an abomination. An abom what? The abomination. abomination. What <laughs> creating, creating stuff. <laughs> We're like doing work, giving out value. Exactly. Giving out the value is an abomination. So let's try a few things out and see how they play. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, what's the, can you say the term in Romanian and say, I am, and what that term? Yes, and, so it's finos. It, yeah, yeah, but I am, say, take it on personally, you know, and you can say the whole thing in Romanian if you want. Okay, yeah, I, I am fragile. No, no, but say it in Romanian because it, it'll play differently in okay. your brain. Yeah. Okay, I am finuts. I am finuts. Sounds quite true. I am, I am meek. Well, I mean, the, the, the compensation for that, look, here's what I'm, I'm looking at to the proportion. The compensation is to create value is not the opposite of meek. Exactly. So yes, I would, I, like if it. you, if that were the belief, you would be trying to be strong yeah but that's yeah. not what you're trying to be you're that's trying to the other route yeah yeah so i think the ideal more points to the real belief which probably is more worthless or yeah yeah, yeah. do you think i mean if you if you think about your life at certain moments Well, maybe a lot of moments since you're always busy trying to either create value or thinking about creating value. So when you're lazy, you're still thinking about creating value, which you better get to at some point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> you feel guilty about going to the museum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God forbid, you know, <laughs> go and enjoy some art. <laughs> <laughs> in Romanian or, or, or German or 
Is English okay? What do you think? What do you mean? For what? For saying, I'm worthless. Yeah. I'm worthless or I'm useless. In, in, in German, that would be nutzlos. Is that yeah. the same kind of same thing? Worthless, useless? Because uh, it's my mother tongue, it's, it kind of hits harder. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I want you to use it. In nutzlos. Nutzlos. In nutzlos. It's quite well. You think that's it? Wertlos, nutzlos. I'm a burden. No, burden's different than useless. Okay. Because a burden involves other people, whereas you can feel worthless or useless on your own without an audience. Okay. A burden implies someone else having to come in, support you. So don't, don't you know, like if that small little change or moves it away from what it yeah might really be yeah but useless seems to be hits deeper than than the weak yeah. one yeah yeah i would think because of the ideal yeah, yeah. that could have been oh, true in your life but not necessarily the dominant structure yeah yeah okay Let's go here. All right, so what happens is that when we see what the unwanted belief is, the, the strategy disappears because there's no reason to have the strategy. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, I didn't, uh, sorry. <laughs> I did all of that. You didn't see it. <laughs> Let me do this again. So you have the ideal. <laughs> yeah. And then the reality. And, uh, you know, the relationships. The yeah. And what I was saying is that when you see what the unwanted belief is, the strategy that's designed to hide it from yourself goes away. Yeah. Yeah. And you no longer need to create the ideal. And here, and I have a test for this for you. If you really got the, if you really got this, you may want to do things in the world, but you wouldn't feel like you have to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you might decide, yes, I do want to do courses and I do want to share material and write books and various things, but you wouldn't have the same motivation to compensate for yourself. Yeah. And if you and if you did, and if you didn't want to do that, it wouldn't be no big deal. Yeah. You can go to the, go to the museum. Yeah, exactly. You go to the museum, you wouldn't feel guilty. You'd feel like oh, I'm enjoying the art. Yeah, I could do that. Of course, you do have redeemable value because you give the artist's purpose <laughs> expression. <laughs> but that, that's to get into joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an artist joke. Yeah, it's an artist joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. What would it be like if, if you know this about yourself, 
And you have to really separate categories of motivation. Aspiration is not the same as obligation. Yeah. Obligation says you got to do it. You got to pay back. Exactly. Aspiration yeah. is I want to create something for its own sake. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do the right thing. Yeah. Versus you don't have to do anything. Yeah. I, I want you to say this and see if it's true or not true in reality. There's in nothing reality. I, in, in reality. There's nothing I have to do. There's nothing I have to do. True or not true? Yes, true. <laughs> Good old reality, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could choose so, to not do anything. You don't have to. Because so that means if you do do something, it's not because you have to, it's because you want to, which is different. Be on the same level as wanting to go to the museum, wanting to do a workshop, lead a workshop, write a book. I mean, it's the same, it's on the same level of you want to do something, it's a matter of choice, not a matter of obligation. You're free to either do it or not do it. Yeah. Is that true? And as you're looking at it now from the point of view of reality, Yes, now, now I'm so loosened up in this call. It's like, yes, yes, I see it. Yeah. It's true. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. And do you see why you thought that you had before? Yeah, because, because I felt useless and I needed to somehow compensate for that. Yeah. For that, yeah. for my truth, basically. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the thing that we're looking at also is um, in terms of a change of underlying structure is this. <clears throat> so if concept is no longer in the structure. Then what you're left with is, it's not that it goes away, it's just no longer in the structure. What you're left yeah. with is um, structural tension, yeah. which is resolvable. You can resolve structural tension. Yeah. The other structure is not resolvable. It isn't that the concepts have gone away. The concept in this case is your belief about yourself. It yeah. just doesn't matter. It's just irrelevant it's to not the things you want to do and, and the things you want to create. Yeah. And that kind of change of underlying structure can be permanent because however old you are up to this point, you've you kind of hidden that from yourself. Yeah. And when you saw it, you made it into a guilt trip. Yeah. When you saw your concept, it was, oh, you better not be that way. You better succeed, accomplish something. You're a better person if you succeed, not as good if you fail. You can't be yourself. Yourself's not right. You got to be better than you are. Yeah. Yeah. How are you it, thinking about this now? It, it feels very freeing. But at the same time, I, like a new anxiety is coming in. Like now I see it in the moment. But the moment yeah. I start working again, this, this entire apparatus I built for myself will kind of capture me. Why do you think it will? given that it's based on you trying to compensate for your belief about yourself. All you'd have to do is remind you of what you think about yourself and then see if you still want to do it. Well, look, the, the way 
that your particular business works is it takes a lot of effort. Just comes with the territory. Yeah. And you can either do it or not do it. And if you do a lot of the things you don't like to do, like marketing, and you do like to do the workshops, but you may have to do the marketing to do the workshops because it's a secondary to a primary choice. But you can decide, choice means you can do it or not do it. And yeah. maybe you don't want to do it enough that you just don't do the workshops because you don't want to yeah. do the marketing. And that's okay. I mean, you still can get it. There's other ways in life to accomplish the quality of life you would like to create. Yeah. Yeah. But you see how you went into a control modality of look out. I'm, I'm likely to forget what I'm now experiencing. No. <laughs> it just froze for a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, okay. You, what you did with that is you basically created a, a conflict to then react against. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> because yeah, that's the pattern. Always. No, no, no. Conflict. That's your choice. You just, Okay. You just look in reality, the, the pattern is based on something that's not steeped in reality, steeped in your concepts. If you stay in reality, what you get yeah. is reality. And in yeah. reality, what's true in reality about what you have to do? I'm waiting. Yeah, nothing. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But but look, uh, if it's look, just to say, no kidding. If it's true, it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's so true. the moment yeah. the moment you start pretending that it's not true is when you're no longer in reality. Yeah. And you can shift your focus back to reality at any time. And it will always be there. Reality will always be there because it's real. Yeah. Now, it seems like so much of my, uh, of my DU, of my aspirations, hmm. were influenced by the concept as well. Yeah. So that's the, the ideal was kind of mixed up. In you there. Might, yeah, and from that point of view, you might authentically rethink yeah. your aspirations to see if you still want those things to create or you want different things. But, and you might decide, yes, I do, or you might decide, no, I don't, or you might decide, well, keep this and change that. You were frozen for a second. What did you hear? Said, uh, that, that I can pursue what I want or pursue or yeah, or, it's not or something else. Not, or not have to pursue. Not have to pursue. Yeah, what you I do. don't have to. Yeah. 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 And there's one more thing. You don't have to be a better person than you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you say that just to see how it plays? <laughs> and you might want to say it in German. German. Uh, just to say it in the mother tongue. Ich muss nicht besser sein, als ich eigentlich bin. True or not true? Ich muss nicht besser sein, als ich eigentlich bin. Yeah, very true. Very yeah. true. Okay. How are you feeling now? Yeah, quite light. Yeah, uh -huh. very, very light. But, but also kind of like uh, directionless. Disoriented. So, Disoriented. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, so I I can do nothing. Good. So I, I might go to the museum this afternoon. Why it's not? Like, really? <laughs> no, but think about that. It's just you feel free. Yeah. These these are common experiences that people have. Do you feel like a weight's been kind of lifted off your shoulders or you physically feel lighter? Yeah. Do you feel more energy in your in yourself yeah but energy for what it's just like energy. energy to, to just run energy. outside yeah. yeah 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 okay and i'm gonna this is a common experience and 
we have observed this over the years, you know, that people, they, when they see what their unwanted belief is and they become fluent in it, there is a change of underlying structure. And there's this experience like you're describing. Yeah. It's very common. Mm -hmm. Chronic stress is caused by, here's this ideal you can never live up to. Yeah. And it never goes away. So even when you're successful, it's, it, and in particularly in your pattern, when you're successful, yeah. it's, it's more stress. It's more, more stress. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. causes it? What's important is what causes it is you can't be what you think you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. This, this loss of integrity. Hmm. Very true. Oh, no, it's not, it's not loss of integrity because you can have perfect integrity in the sense that your values are absolutely honest as can be. You just don't know any better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and because you think this, mm -hmm. you generate that. It's not even you consciously generate it. It just yeah. automatically generates. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think we're through. Do you think we're through? Yeah. Yeah. What was that that purpose uh, structure? Some people think they have to justify your, their existence by fulfilling a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's not you. I know it, that I, I know that you had a subset of that built in. Exactly. Yeah, but it's it, in, in but it wasn't thing. causal. It was yeah. not the causal structure. Yeah. Can you tell the people watching this, can you tell what it was like going through this journey together? And any of the points of insights that were really important to you? Yeah, like I really love how to uh, how to you know, to go into the structure and to see especially how you you draw it. Mm. It's like oh, of course, of course, it makes so much sense. Mm. Me being with the two rubber pants and then seeing okay, what is what is causing it, and especially the what was it? How you mapped out my story. The pattern and, yeah. and, and, and everything fit and mm. seeing seeing you know I, i've tried it several times on my own but i, I just didn't get there mm. just, it was kind of mush, mushy and you you made that so clear and it's like oh, of course of course yeah that's what mm. this is what i i was looking for all the time and he's just seeing it in a nice structure so yeah. that, that that was quite quite relieving for me so and yeah I, I need to look at the uselessness over and over but now i feel like very very light i'm not and, sure you have to look at it over and over why do you think that i mean it's kind of like once you know it you know it. it's like you once okay. you know what color your eyes are you know what color your eyes are but my 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 worry is that I know it conceptually, but I don't know it like experientially. Yes, you do, because that's why you feel a release of stress. Okay, yeah. So, and if you do look at it, just uh, say it in German to yourself in a couple of times and mm -hmm. don't, don't spend any time on it. Don't make it a new obsession. Okay, okay yeah, don't make it a new <laughs> obsession. That's true. <laughs> Don't let it be your mantra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, what's really important is what you decide your aspirations are and where you are in relation to, to that mm -hmm. and what choices you make in order to create those things. Knowing that you don't have to create anything, it especially gives... ...preciousness to the things you do decide to create. Yeah. Because you're doing it because you want to, not because you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else uh, you want to report or ask? Yeah, I just love the, the, the compensation part. I was never thinking about it as compensation. Mm. I was just like, you know, that's just what I do. This is what I have to do. But it, yeah, it, it, and I even called it a creation. I call mm. it, you know, I made my, my own 
structural tension chart and then it's like yeah <laughs> yeah it's done but yeah and seriously like you're a genius oh, thanks. <laughs> to, to, to be that fast and on point so yeah thank yeah. you thank you and let us know how it turns out over time too i will be yeah. really quite interested in i will yeah, yeah. then maybe like some okay life. all the best and thank you so much yeah.